Okay, so welcome to the third and fourth part of this course, which is all about HTML. Uh, and in this lecture, we cover the basics of HTML. We cover lots of tags, lots of examples, how to add content to, to a website. Um, then we go a little bit into the distinction between XHTML and HTML5. Uh, and finally, we cover what it means that HTML is correct. We go into HTML validation and discuss accessibility of websites. The learning outcomes are that you are able to explain key language concepts of HTML. Uh, you should be able to define what accessibility means and give examples for that. Um, based on your HTML knowledge, you should somehow be able to tell, predict how a website looks like. Uh, so far, of course, only restricted to the structure um, and develop basic applications. This will, to a large extent, not come through the lecture, but through the first assignment. Um, similarly, the more advanced learning outcomes are to analyze source code, propose improvements and improve existing applications. And all of that requires a lot of practice, so it will be mainly a part of the assignments. Now these slides uh, are mainly a reference, they contain lots of text and there will be demos now during this lecture and during the exercise sessions uh, and I'll upload all the files that I reference in this uh, slide set. But it's really a reference, so they're not excellent slides, they are a reference for you to read up. Um, and the demos we are doing, they focus on content. They are ugly, so I do not anyhow design them in a nice way. Um, and the main reason is that HTML is simply uh, not con concerned with design, it's content. So the styling, the design comes later when we cover CSS in lectures five and six. So don't get too upset if the slides are really not that nice. As for literature, um, there is a lot of stuff. Now, the first two references are really good references to look up different tags examples for different things you might want to do with HTML. So they're really good references, great tutorials that cover everything from really basic stuff to advanced things. Um, so that, that's a typical place to look up if you have any questions regarding HTML. Um, third one is, is really on HTML5 specifically. The fourth one is the W3C validator. We'll use this one heavily, um, especially in the assignments. And then the fifth and sixth reference are on accessibility. Uh, the seventh is on the course book, so chapter two is all about HTML. Um, there is a practical example in there, you of course don't have to follow that, but uh, it's a good read to quickly read up. Um, required reading, so relevant for the exam, is only number six, so this is a part on what you might want to look at when you look at accessibility. Now, HTML, I've mentioned a couple of times already, and the acronym stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Um, and what this means is basically, we have some more hypertext, and that's, as we already discussed in the first lecture, that's text that somehow contains links to other texts. Uh, so basically text and links, that's what we have in HTML. Uh, and then a markup language is basically a language where you can somehow uh, mark or tag uh, parts in the document to indicate logic structures. For example, you could mark that there is a paragraph um, or you give instruction how to lay out it. So HTML is such a language. Uh, other languages you might know are, for example, uh, Markdown, where you can indicate what is a paragraph, what is a list and so on. Uh, or the languages you use for editing text in wikis is similar. Um, but you'll Get, if you have never worked with HTML or anything similar, you will see what this means to tag something. Uh, so basically, altogether, this is a language that helps you to write text and annotate it so that you can link to other texts. Um, but it's actually not only text, it's everything else you might want to include. So you include images, videos, sounds, everything else in your text. Um, and these annotations that we have, the part of the markup language, they are so-called tags. Uh, and in HTML, a tag is indicated by these angle brackets. So you always have a start bracket, an end bracket, and in between you have uh, some kind of 
text that describe what this tag is about. Um, and the text you want to annotate is between the start and the end. So for example, here we have a so-called P tag. This stands for a paragraph. Um, and here we have an end tag. So this is the same name, P and P. And the only difference is that we have a slash. So it basically means that here our paragraph starts, here our paragraph ends. And everything that is in between is the text that uh, belongs to this paragraph. So that's, that's really how it works. So if you would only use these P tags, you could now write a number of paragraphs and HTML would understand that, okay, whenever we get to this tag, then this one starts again, then basically we get to a new paragraph. Uh, so that's how HTML looks like. Um, you have the start tag, you have the end tag, and you have the content in between. HTML is text. so. It can be read and written using any kind of text editor. Um, and that's good when you write it, of course. You have to somehow write your HTML code, but the main intention is that it's interpreted. So you don't want to look at source code, at HTML code, uh, but usually you want to look at the result. Uh, and that's what you do with a browser. So if you have Firefox, Chrome, what they really do is they interpret HTML code. Um, and instead of showing you all the ugly tags, they show you uh, the formatted result. So instead of showing you the P, it shows you a paragraph. Um, so that's really the, the example here. And this is not compiled, it's just interpreted. And this means whenever you look at a website, you can actually look at the source code. So you can look at the HTML. And this screenshot is from Firefox where you can just right click and say view page source. Um, and I can demonstrate that. So if we go to any page, google.com for example, and I right click you can say view page source, Chrome has something similar. Uh, you'll get this window that shows you lots of cryptic text. Uh, this is a specifically bad example because Google messes up a lot. Um, if we go to a different website, for example, I believe the Wikipedia website looks slightly more readable. Uh, you see, this is already a bit maybe more readable. Um, but this is essentially, as you see, there are just these kind of tags um, that describe different parts of the document. Now, HTML has different versions, so it started in 91 already. Um, that's the first websites I showed you in the first lecture. And it evolved, uh, and it's still evolving. Ideally, a browser, any kind of browser nowadays, should be able to interpret all versions if it's declared properly in the source code. Um, but the issue is always that HTML is slightly displayed differently in different browsers. So they, some browsers are stricter, they ignore certain things that you should not be doing, others are more liberal, um, and there are slight differences. So it's always a bit tricky to get a website look exactly how you want it to look on all different browsers. So that's important to know. Um, we will look into XHTML and HTML5, even though HTML5 is sort of the standard nowadays. XHTML has not really uh, become very popular. HTML5 is developed as a so-called living standard, and that means it basically evolves, it changes over time. Um, instead of releasing fixed versions, it just evolves over time. Uh, and you can look it up under this address if you're interested. So this address describes what kind of elements you have, what kind of tags, uh, how they are supposed to be uh, nested and so on. Um, and the difference between the versions is essentially what kind of tags they support. So what kind of things you can do um, and what kind of restrictions you have. And what you, how you declare this is the first line of an HTML document. So there is the so-called doc type tag. Um, and if you use the first one here, exclamation mark doc type HTML, it means you are using HTML5. Um, this one here, which is, uh, looks very cryptic, uh, is HTML4 in strict. There are different kinds of versions. Uh, and the one down here is XHTML 1.0 strict. So those are simply different versions of, of HTML, but the most common one you'll see all over the place is just a simple doc type HTML. Uh, if we go back to Wikipedia, you'll also see that that's the case here. So basically the browser knows we are having an HTML5 document uh, and it means the browser interprets it 
as such. Now let's go into what HTML really looks like. Uh, so you have seen that we have tags, but basically you have the doc type that tells you what is the version of HTML. Uh, and what I've written here, this kind of open tag, exclamation mark, two dashes, and then two dashes and a closing bracket at the end, that's a comment in HTML. So basically here I'm just having a comment saying HTML version. So every HTML document should start with this tag. Uh, then you have the HTML tags. So you have the start tag and you have at the very end of your document, you have the end tag. Um, and that should contain everything else. So within this tag, you have further tags. Uh, and there are two parts that are particularly important. It's the head and it's the body. Uh, the head is indicated by the head tag and then the end tag. That's meta information. So that's sort of all, for example, the title of your website, who is the author, keywords and so on. That belongs here. Uh, the body is what you actually see. So text, pictures, videos and so on. And common thing is that you have a title in uh, the head and then in the body you have tags. For example, the H1 tag is a heading uh, and the paragraph you have already seen. So this website would show you in the toolbar, it would show you my first website as a title and then the browser would display a heading saying my first website and under it a paragraph, welcome to my website. Uh, so that's the very basics. Uh, of how HTML looks like. Um, the title is a required thing. You should always have that. Uh, the same goes for HTML and doc type. Now, since you have learned Python, it's maybe important to notice that the, the indentation uh, that we go in here is something that is done as convention in HTML, but it's not required. So you can put the entire code into one line and it will still look exactly the same. Um, indentation just makes it more readable. But because you have the end tags, uh, the browser does not need to have this indentation information. So it's fine to have everything in one line. Uh, the other thing, of course, that you have noticed is that tags can be nested. So the head tag is within the HTML tag the title tag is within the head tag and so on. Um, and this of course has a logical meaning. So for example, the paragraph here is within the body and that means that it's displayed in the body. And this finally means that uh, because of this nesting, an HTML document is actually a tree structure. So you can say that the HTML tag is the root and then the head is one of the childs and then the head itself has another child and so on. Uh, this is not so relevant right now, but it becomes very important when we get later to JavaScript, for example. Um, and as I already discussed, this tag here is a comment. Um, and as long as you don't close it, it's a comment, so you can go over multiple lines. There is no single line comment in HTML. Okay. So uh, you have seen tags and so far almost everything I've shown you had a start and an end tag, but not all tags have an end tag. Uh, one example that you have seen is the doc type tag. There is no ending tag to this one uh, and that's fine. Um, basically a tag does not need to have an end tag when it does not enclose anything, when there's nothing within it. Uh, so if you do a line break, for example, it's a BR tag. Um, then th it doesn't make sense to have anything within the line break. So it's simply a single thing. An image is a similar thing. You just have a one tag and that's it. Uh, these are called empty tags. That's just their name. Uh, and there is a convention to add a slash before you close the bracket. So you will often see something like that. That simply says BR and instead of directly closing the angle, you have a space and a slash. Uh, and that indicates that, okay, there's nothing else coming. There's no end tag to this one. Uh, and that's a convention, it's not required. Um, the other thing that you have uh, not seen yet in this very brief example is attributes, but most tags can have something like attributes. That's basically added information. Uh, and in general, that's a key value pair. So you have an attribute name 
equals uh, quotation marks and then the value. Uh, and a typical thing is, for example, the, the image. When you have an image tag, you have to tell the browser where is the image located, where is the image file. Uh, and for that, you need the source attribute. So you would, if you just do IMG and you close it, it will not display anything. It doesn't make sense. But you need to tell the browser where is the image. So you use source equals quotation mark test.jpg. Uh, and that would mean that we are looking for the test.jpg file that's in the same folder as our HTML document. Uh, so this is an HTML attribute, uh, very, very common. Again, if we go to the uh, Wikipedia page, you'll see this all over the place. So for example, here, the HTML tag actually has some kind of attributes already. The class attribute, the lang attribute, the directory attribute. Okay, so that's uh, the first part on HTML. And we'll continue then with more tags and uh, details in the second part.